Since 1978, Children's Corner in Nashville, Tennessee has been more than just a shop. It's a community. Born out of a passion for creating timeless, handmade children's clothing, the store was founded by a group of local women who loved sewing for their children and imagined others did as well. Initially focused on sewing supplies and fabric, the store wasn't in the pattern business. Well, when we first started, it was just a fabric store. And then classes were started because people wanted to learn how to do it. And we would just trace the patterns off and give them to people who were taking the classes. But when the local community started asking for patterns for children, the owners listened. We took a lot of beautiful heirloom samples to a show in Texas one time. And those people just went crazy. They, they couldn't believe it. They'd never seen anything like that. I think we sold everything we had. And we didn't intend to sell anything. And then we decided to get into the pattern business. And then other shops started calling, wanting our patterns. They took a chance and released the first pattern, Maggie. We had to name the patterns. And we, all we could think about was our own children and relatives' children. and. I, I think we wanted to give them names rather than numbers because people would remember the design where they would not remember the number. And that happens to me this day. Before they knew it, Children's Corner Patterns became a household name. Whenever there's a girl twirling in her hand-sewn party dress, we know someone poured hours into creating that moment. We exist for those moments. And just like those early days, we still offer in-store shopping and classes, but now we offer video lessons, downloadable patterns, and we ship worldwide, ensuring that everybody has access to our patterns and expertise. We are a place where creation and tradition meet, one stitch at a time. Hi, my name is Emily Douglas, and um, I have the great honor to um, have a wonderful conversation with the original um, founders of the Children's Corner. And so today we're going to dive into some of the history of the Children's Corner and the fun stories and the the why and the heart behind um, this wonderful magical place. And so I want to introduce um, some wonderful ladies, and I might ask you each to introduce yourselves. And if you don't mind, just kind of um, mention um, how you got started with the Children's Corner. So Ginger, let's start with you. I'm Ginger Caldwell. Um, after I took sewing for children, uh, I wanted patterns and fabric, and it just wasn't that wasn't found very readily in Nashville. So, um, and I had met Miss Johnson. Like I said, I had Miss Buford, a uh, teacher I had for sewing for children was Miss Buford. Uh, Miss Johnson had a husband named Glenn. And so we went to her to ask her if we could print some of her patterns. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it started. All right. Well, is that... I'm Lizette Thomason, and I smocked my first dress when I was in sixth grade, <laughs> and my maternal grandmother taught me. It was on black gingham, and I had to pick up the uh -uh. little squares <laughs> by hand and then did a very simple geometric. And my twin sister and I did the same thing, and then they went back to my grandmother, and she made put the did the construction on mm. the dresses. And I was probably maybe um, after Ginger asked me to come in and be with her in Children's Corner. And we had talked and talked on the phone, but we were money on the table, <laughs> name signed on the contracts for the corporation, and we had yet to meet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I forgot never about that. Knew that. <laughs> wow. So, how did you know to call Lizette? Was it Ann Daniels? Probably uh -huh. so, Ann Daniels. Daniels. She was one of the original. And okay. I was doing uh, custom sewing for a 
ready to wear shop in Green Hills. Okay. And hmm. they, a ginger wasn't Helen's, it was up the street from Helen's. And I, Enchanted Cottage. Enchanted Cottage. Oh, I remember. Enchanted okay. Cottage. And so I was doing custom work for them. I had quit teaching school, math, and I had was taking a year off before going back to teaching because I had a two-year-old. <laughs> and um, so I just did substitute teaching and then started doing custom sewing at, the, at Enchanted Cottage. And then that's how I got hooked up with Ginger. Okay. <laughs> so, Kathy. I'm Kathy Jones, and my grandmother actually taught me how to sew and quilt. She had those huge quilt frames in her bedroom. I can remember that. <laughs> and I always really enjoyed sewing and did a little sewing for myself in high school. Not much, but a little. And then... I had a daughter, and I became very interested in sewing. And then I had a son and wanted him to wear cute things, too. So I got started and found Children's Corner. I was a preschool teacher, and then I went to Children's Corner, and I've been there ever since, and I'm still there. <laughs> yes, you are. So We're going to take her out uh, first. I know. We want it. So when we say where it started, ink on the paper, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 1978, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Um, so at the time, let's kind of go back to that time and why you even thought, well, why don't we do this? Were, were there not other sources? I mean, Simplicity or McCall's Vogue patterns, those those had been around, yeah, right? but they didn't have much smocking or, uh -huh. or they, they didn't sewing. do the classic things. Mm -hmm. Yes. So they, you, you saw... Nobody's doing this. Well, mm -hmm. We should. Is it's that a market or something? There's a need. Uh huh. Well, when we first started, it was uh, not the patterns. It was just the fabric store and custom orders, and then um, classes were started because people wanted to learn how to do it, and we would just trace the patterns off and give them to people yes. who were taking the classes. Oh my goodness. On brown paper. Uh huh. And. Um, and we just thought it'd be so much fun just to sit around and sew all day with our friends. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then we decided to get into the pattern business. And this was just a few months after we opened, and that's when Kathy came on board with us. And she has just been a total asset to the company from oh, day one. And we Absolutely. used to fold our own patterns. And if you've ever folded the coat pattern out of, what was that, paper? Blueprint paper. Blueprint, Blueprint paper. Blueprint paper. Ooh. Oh, the I, patterns were like six feet by six feet, uh -huh. and you had to get down in the floor. We were uh -huh. young enough then to get down yes, in the floor. Yes, we could do that then. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, talk to me about that. So you, I mean, we have a process now, right? We, we draw on a computer. We, we, if we're taking a photograph of a sample on a child, we get to take one million photographs and pick, pick the best one. one. Mm -hmm. You know, we have these tools to, to, to make all this happen, mm -hmm. but you were doing this when you didn't have these tools. Mm -hmm. no. you, you were having to... <laughs> our, our pattern covers were watercolors uh -huh. that this, na this lady named Lucy, Lucy Pointer Lucy Pointer did, and uh, her watercolors are beautiful. Of course, you've reproduced some of them mm -hmm. as prints. Mm -hmm. and, um, so how'd you find Lucy, and why did you say, oh, let's, let's make that the... She was... Um, her sister owned a lingerie Rebecca shop. Rebecca Vaughn. Rebecca Vaughn. Rebecca Vaughn, I remember. Right there close to the shop. Uh -huh. And um, and Lucy worked for her. And then... I think she did her ads in the paper for her. Okay. Yes. So that's how we knew she, you know... Uh -huh. Was an us. illustrator. And so that was back when they had the black and white drawn ads for mm -hmm. the really nice stores and things like that. Okay. So... So what? Okay, so let's go back. So we're, you have the retail shop. You're having fun, you're sitting around sewing all day. But then you're like, why are we giving this away? Right? We should figure out how to print this, and maybe somebody will buy it. Is that kind of what mm -hmm. it felt like? And I never we'll forget the first time we went to our first saga convention. Okay. And we took some patterns. And and I sold them out of the trunk of the car. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I mean, we were so nervous. Nobody wanted to buy these patterns. You know, mm. we were just nervous. And we got swamped. So oh. that's when we knew we had a... How many patterns did you take to that? I have no idea. 
I mean, a dozen, maybe. Probably. probably. A, bo- a box full. A box I mean, full. a yes. small box full. And you had printed enough, or mm-hmm. did you have to come home and then print no, a bunch was, more? You sold was, out what you had. We sold out what we had. Uh-huh. Yeah. But we knew people wanted more after that, so. And then other shops started calling, wanting our patterns. And at that time, my twin sister lived um, in Shreveport, Louisiana, and there was a shop there called the Uso School, owned by Miss Edith Fault. And I was visiting my sister, and uh, we had both started smocking for our little girls. And uh, so she took me to the Uso School to be, to meet uh, Miss Edith. And at that time, Miss Edith was the only place in the United States where you could get a pleater. And it was a 16-row reed pleater from South Africa. And you would, you would tell Miss Edith you wanted one, you would pay for it. Then she would order like twice a year from South Africa. Wow. And then you would get your pleater. And that's how we got our first pleater at Children's mm-hmm. Quarter. Wow. So did you teach people... How to plead? Or you pleaded for, you had a pleading service. We had a pleading service. Uh-huh. Yeah. And um, I think that um, most stores started out that way before it became m- more mainstream for people to buy their own pleaders. And the original Children's Corner pleader that's now 47 years old lives at my house. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, we, we're not going to put anything through that now. I feel like some of our pleaders now, no. steam's coming off of them. We use them so much. Yeah. Oh, that's great. I love that. So, okay. So, if you've, you're you drawing these first patterns, mm-hmm. you're tra- you've asked Miss Johnson if yes. we can take her designs and draw. I mean, I'm even intrigued because I see them on the old Mylar paper. Mm-hmm. You yes. are, I mean, are you drawing with... I mean, what's India happening? Ruler. A ruler? ruler and India ink. Mm-hmm. Which India ink will flat stain your skin, won't it? Uh, oh, yeah. And, and an art gum, uh, <laughs> if anybody knows what that is. No, what is that? <laughs> You've never heard of an art gum? Uh-uh. It's a little bitty rectangle square that erases It's a ink. soft, gummy eraser <laughs> that will take the... Okay. Take the... And it works better if you spit on the line yes. first <laughs> and then it erase it. <laughs> it does. Good to know. We did Good to know these little hints. <laughs> so you would draw them, and I mean, did you each play a role in that, or did one kind of? Mary D drew them, didn't she? Mary D was, I think, was the first. This was Mary D. Elliston of the Mary, Mary D. D. Pattern. pattern. Uh-huh. Thing. Kathy's very good friend. She grew up with. And um, then. Let's see, after Mary D. stopped doing it, my mother and father actually did it. Did mm-hmm. they? Yes. I remember that. And uh, they did it for years, Ginger. Huh. So. Wow. And even after my daddy had a stroke, the mother continued doing mm. it. So. And then Ann did it. And then Ann, Ann did it. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, and Ann is my daughter. And by yes. the time we got to Ann, well, maybe even when your parents did it, we had this film that we typed on the typewriter, the names. We had stopped hand hand, hand writing, writing it. And we used this the typewriter to type on this film that you peeled the back off of and stuck it on the mylar. Yeah. Oh. Every single note. Every word. So quarter inch seam on yes. every oh, size. You should have yeah. been there at the when we had checking checking the patterns. Oh, tell me. Oh, it would go on forever. <laughs> quarter inch seam here by the side, center back on fold. We still do that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and change. Uh huh. No, we do check, but we <laughs> still make mistakes. They're a lot easier, quicker to fix. Mm-hmm. I mean, you'd have to peel off yes. that sticker, I guess, and start and, over with your sticker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's amazing to me because I think of how lucky we are. <laughs> we didn't have to walk through um, those hoops. And I, I feel like, too, you set us up so well when I think about how lucky I am to have entered the picture. It's been 11 years. Can you believe wow. it? Um, that you all set us up so well, not only with a loyal f- customer base, but you really made in my opinion, some very strategic choices. And I'd love for you all to talk about that in those early days that 
I think, say who we are as a brand. For example, we don't nest our sizes. I know. Right. They're all separate. Yes. Mm-hmm. T- printing on tissue, as soon as you figured out how to do that, that, that we, there's just not many in the industry mm-hmm. that are doing those things. So when you made those decisions, tell me why you did or, um, yeah. Well, those blueprints were really hard to fold, uh-huh. and it was nice to go to tissue yes. because they were pre-folded at the factory, uh-huh. Uh-huh. and, and it, it was McCall's that... And printed. I didn't want a trace pattern just to get my size. I wanted right. just to be able to cut it out. That's right. So, you know, it was a lot of trouble, those nested patterns, yes. tracing and everything. So you were a, a sewer mm-hmm. saying, this is what I want, mm-hmm. so we're going to create the product that I would mm-hmm. want to receive. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I think that's it's really incredible because I think it's really set us apart and and makes a, a big difference. Mm-hmm. And, and for years, there wasn't a computer, mm-hmm. and so all of the instructions had to be. I typed them all. Oh my goodness! On a typewriter. <laughs> and then I would take them in the early days. I would take them to this place called Green Hills Print, mm-hmm. and he did all of our instructions and folded folded them in half. And printed all the envelopes in black and white. And every morning, I would call Nashville Blue for a pickup, and they'd come get the Mylars that I needed for that day, take them away, print them, and bring them back, usually the same afternoon, if not the next morning. Explain to them what Mylar is. Uh, It's plastic paper. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Heavy plastic paper. Uh Uh-huh. And then the patterns were drawn with India ink. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. So th- you you would put in a daily order, yes, based on what you sales. heard from sales from mm-hmm. shops, because you would get back. So what I mean, what would be a typical order? Um, twenty to twenty five of two, three, four. You know, and we just kept getting more and more patterns. But then finally, when we could send them off to be printed at a factory on tissue, mm-hmm. it was. Much easier then, uh, yeah. I think. Just well, they had a requirement. I mean, if you ordered a thousand or something, it was a lot cheaper. Sure. Than oh, to yeah. get five hundred. But we didn't have any room for all that for years. Mm-hmm. We yeah, that presented a new problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, didn't it? We had to have warehouse space. Uh huh. Because you were sharing space with the store. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yes. All along. Um, okay. So you've got you put in this order, and it comes back, but it's not all folded. The- oh, it's rolled up with a rubber band on it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Butch would deliver it every afternoon. Mm-hmm. Butch. Thank mm-hmm. you, Butch. Mm-hmm. So back to the store. Back to the store, and then I would give Ginger her pile to do at night. Was that her pile? <laughs> My pile? Everybody took a pile home, <laughs> folded them, brought them back in a shopping ba- uh, bag the next morning. Yes. To then go in the mail. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I used that. to pay my children 10 cents <laughs> a pattern <laughs> that helped me fold. I I'm, still have a little uh, sign when Kathy, I think, said something about the coat pattern. She didn't want to fold it anymore. It was <laughs> the biggest one. No one wanted <laughs> to fold, fold the, the coat coach. pattern. They, and give you side eye <laughs> if you showed up with the coat pattern. Well, so how old were your children? You said that 10 cents each, but mm-hmm. how old were they when you got started? We started Anne was three. When we started, and Mary Alice was four. Kathy, Kathy was born in seventy two, and Mary Alice was born in seventy four. And Anne was born in seventy five. And then Candace was. Um, Candace was born in seventy one, and Eric was born in seventy three. Okay, so mm-hmm. you little, all are all little, little children, children, mm-hmm. children mm-hmm. which yes. speaks to why you were doing it. inspired. Mm-hmm. You know, you all wanted to be dressing mm-hmm. them, but at the same time, your time as a young mom was stretched then. Well, back then, for birthday parties in church, you dressed up. Yes. I mean, you didn't wear mm. floppy clothes. So. No. <laughs> you, wore, you wore a smock dress or you wore Batiste. a handmade Batiste, Batiste dress. Batiste dress. Mm-hmm. With all the lace mm-hmm. and embroidery, hand embroidery. Mm-hmm. And there was a demand back then for pretty christening gowns. And yes. Day gowns. Yes. And so early, you were doing... Um, Custom sewing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> In fact, we made together Waylon Jennings' son's uh-uh. christening gown. Uh-uh. It was 36 <laughs> inches long. Mm-hmm. And we then that. after that, Barbara Mandrell and mm-hmm. her sisters mm-hmm. used to come in and order 
um, daygelds, Batiste daygelds, that were totally made with a needle and thread, rolled and whipped. And By their request? Or you just... It's no. just the way we did it. That's how you're doing it. And yes. we sell those gowns that was labor and fat materials for $30. Stop. Mm-hmm. Stop it. Didn't we? Oh. We might sell a Batiste dress with a lot of work on it for 40 We thought we were getting rich. Oh, <laughs> Bless it. <laughs> we took a lot of beautiful heirloom samples to a show in Texas one time, and those people just went crazy. They they couldn't believe it. They'd never seen anything like that. And they had plenty of money, so they were just more than eager to buy them. I think we sold everything we had, yeah. <laughs> and we didn't intend to sell anything. Oh, wow. <laughs> but you probably could have been charging mm-hmm. more even mm-hmm. then. Mm-hmm. Yes. But you just... Again, you're just figuring it out, right? Mm-hmm. Those if are you made a nickel an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hope you made more than a nickel since you were paying it ten cents to um, <laughs> fold the fold the pattern. Do y'all still have the tea scans and all for sale in the shop? We don't have them for sale, but we have a big yes, like on display, display for inspiration. Mm-hmm. Um, we what's interesting is there's a lot of customers that do wish that we did custom sewing. Um, I think. And Kathy, you probably can speak to this, but it's it's hard to find somebody that wants to put the amount of time in based on what we need to charge yeah. to make it worthwhile. Absolutely. Yeah. And the the supplies to make it with are not cheap either. Right. So it's a big investment. Mm-hmm. Even to buy the things and make it yourself, it's a mm-hmm. big investment. Yeah. Our first two loans that we got after we opened uh, were five hundred dollars each that we borrowed from the bank, and one went to M. E. Feld in New York <laughs> for lace, lace. from, from, mm-hmm. from France, mm-hmm. and the other one went to Mr. Geiger for Swiss Batiste. Wow! Who was the guy that used to come to the shop with all the lace? Brian. 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 But at the time when all that's going on, there are, were a lot of shops dotted around, especially the southeast. Correct. Yes. A lot of retail shops. Birmingham, especially Atlanta. Atlanta never did have a lot. A lot of well, shops. they had Pentux and Pinafores. That was a big shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Birmingham, Memphis, mm-hmm. Louisiana, Mississippi, oh, Mississippi. Uh, Lafayette. Uh, Lafayette still has two beautiful stores. Neil McQuinn in Jackson. What was the name of her store? Oh, uh, can't remember. I talked to her Smoking the other day. Smoking shop. Smoking shop. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow. We, she's on Facebook. Oh, yes. She, yeah. And we hooked up on Facebook Does and then, still and look then the I called same? her. Um, no. No. <laughs> we look, still look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Do we look the same? <laughs> I doubt it. He used Here's to have a red hair. Color. I did. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Well, I was thinking the other day because um, we are bringing back Maggie, which was <laughs> what you, yes, the pattern that you numbered number one. Number one. So the patterns each have a number, and we have just, we are in production. It's not in print yet for three number 325, which is it really, oh my is that wild? So I, I'd love for you to just comment. I mean, where did Maggie come from? Well, when, right. Wasn't that a friend of Miss Johnson's daughter? That's, the name? Yes. The yes. Name. She uh-huh, always Maggie. was in charge of the name if it was her design. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gwen, she had a daughter named Gwen, and that's where Gwen came uh, for from. For the bishop. Uh-huh. You... And her husband's name was Glenn. That's where the uh-huh. boys Glenn came from. So, who made the decision we should name these designs after a child? Like, where, where did that. Well, it, we had to name the patterns, and uh-huh. we, all we could think about was our own children and relatives' children. And I, I, I think <laughs> we wanted to give them names rather than numbers mm-hmm. because people would remember mm-hmm. the design mm-hmm. where they would not remember the number. And that happens to me this day because all these years I knew those pattern numbers inside and out. Mm-hmm. And now I'm thinking about it, and I have to go and dig through my patterns until I find yes. the pattern I'm looking mm-hmm. for and um, find out what the number yeah, is. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a Kathy and a Mary Alice. She has an Ann. We have a Candace. 
and Eric. And Eric. Eric, and, Eric. Mm-hmm. and Katie's skirt was named mm-hmm. after my niece. Well, it was a brilliant idea. I mean, decision. Mindy's, Mindy's my niece. Crosby yeah. was my niece. And <laughs> Bessie was my niece. I love it. Was it? Bessie yeah. Was your niece? Because it gives such a personal touch. Because mm-hmm. really, what we're providing our customers is the thing that you all are talking about that you love so much. I mean, mm-hmm. it's this connection to sewing for these little people that means so much. And so putting the name on it just instantly and, uh, brings them into that. Going back to Bessie, um, people keep screaming for it to come back. Well, it has come back. Uh-huh. It is a smocked Ruthie it now. Is. Yes. And um, with how to make it and uh-huh. the exact pattern pieces for it that you can download. And now the original Bessie is actually a nuclear physicist. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we should tell the story of where all these uh, little children are to the extent. Yes. So Maggie was number one with with several. I mean, can you take yourself back to that time? Can you imagine that there we'd be almost, here we are, 46 years later, 325 mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. patterns? Wow. I mean, what could you have ever? No. I was amazed when we had the first 10. <laughs> <laughs> and we had... Back then, in if it was an offshoot of an original pattern, it wasn't given a separate number. It would be like 1A uh-huh. was Ashley, and it was the bubble version of Maggie. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, we, Kathy, I mean, has been a part of all of this, too, as we've been um, bringing Maggie back. But it we stuck very closely to what Maggie was and those mm-hmm. ha- where it started. And um, though I will comment, when it comes to instructions, we do put a lot of work into those instructions. I know you do, and, and I think very part good. of I think part of that is it's just a different time. Yeah, you know, moms of my era are those that are. I'm not even in that young mom era anymore, but. Um, they didn't learn how to sew at school. Mm-hmm. They they maybe had a grandmother or a mother teach them, but we find we've got to like step by step. The yes. basics. The basics. Where talk about your instructions before. I mean, Kathy will laugh. We always laugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it was. I mean, there's no way they would have fit on two sheets of paper today. But Right? I mean, your customer mm-hmm. was different. Mm-hmm. She kind of had the knowledge that she was coming in with that's different than today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, when we started, and for several years after that, the sewing school at Watkins Institute was still going on. So there were people still taking classes then. Yeah. And Ginger, when did that end? Do you remember? Mm-mm. And a lot of ladies taught smoking in their homes, too. Yes, yes. So... I've heard these stories, and I know you all took them, but at Watkins, am I right? It was like a six-month-long course? A year. A year-long course, okay. And you had a notebook. Okay. And you got notes for every week you mm-hmm. went. But it was just sort of a continuing education. You're, mm-hmm. you're a mom at home. This is what— I mean, they taught adult sewing. They uh-huh. taught everything. Watkins was a big deal. It was a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you all know each other there? You knew. No, no, I didn't go to Watkins. And I didn't either. I didn't okay. Either. Oh, you didn't either? Mm-mm. You just knew that it existed. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Where did you take? She said Ms. Buford was Ms. her Buford. teacher. She was out of her house. She mm-hmm. was out of her house. Mm-hmm. I think there was a lot of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, Miss Johnson taught at Watkins, though. So. Yeah. Yes. So what, did, what do you think? I mean, because now you, you talked about this, Ginger, you know, we don't dress our children in similar mm-hmm. ways. I mean, it's thankfully mm-hmm. the taste is still out there and people still want to sew. But well, they, you know, like the classic design still, mm-hmm. that's good. Yeah. And I think I think we see kind of this desire um, because of Pinterest or mm-hmm. Etsy. If people just want to use their hands again. They mm-hmm. want to. Um, but they're not afraid to be self-taught, <laughs> you know, and which is why we're trying to really get into videos and to, I know, you know, Lizette, what you do on your, in your Facebook group to try to inspire and educate, we got to do it in a different way, but it's important because mm-hmm. we love it so much. We want, continue. Uh, yeah, we want it to continue. 
Yeah. Um, so Lizette, how did you get into, you've, you have been an educator and teacher in a, huge settings. So how did you start doing that? Oh, uh, the Facebook? No, teaching. Teaching. So when you were, yeah, back when. Well, um, I, t- I taught school. I was a junior high math teacher. Mm-hmm. And um, I did that for five years. Okay. And then I took that year off when I had a two-year-old. <laughs> and then Ginger came, and we got together, and no looking back. Yes. So you all had a classroom in those early? Uh, we always had a retail yeah. store, always a retail location. Yes. Well, the first store we had was <laughs> at the corner of Vandy Wood and Hills- Circle or Hillsborough Circle, circle. Mm-hmm. and a little known to us, and we moved started we moved in in August, late, late July, early August. He didn't have heat. Oh boy! <laughs> so we realized soon after that we we're going to have to move. So we moved up the road. I'm trying to think where that is, Hillsborough Circle. What's there now? Uh, it's by that Joe's place. I think it's vacant. Oh, over by it's Food a- Company and. It's a it's a parking lot now. Okay. Yeah, yeah a park. It is a parking lot. Now. Yeah. Okay. So you move from there. Where'd you go? To Cleghorn. Cleghorn, just Cleghorn, up around the road. corner. Mm-hmm. Of Crestmore. 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 And we had a little thing in the basement with some space in it, and that's where we kept the mylars, and that's, that's where we. That was wholesale. That was wholesale down there. Okay. And I, that's where I worked in the okay. basement. And then there was a retail store mm-hmm. upstairs, upstairs yes. with a classroom behind it. Mm-hmm. Is that the Dillard's now, or was that before you moved to the? No, that space. A, it's up there by Margie's Furniture Store. Okay, it's right down. It's, yes. it's like two doors down from that. Yes. Okay. So then, from there, Diamond Brokers was in there for oh, a long Diamond time. Brokers. Yeah. And from there, was that when we split up? Well, we went up to White Bridge Road. We, wholesale was on White Bridge Road in the Cavalier Building, and retail yeah, was so. above. Um, it was right next door to Lonnie Young Shoes. Okay, upstairs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a long time ago. <laughs> I never knew it was up next to Lonnie Young. Lonnie mm-hmm. Young's still there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And one minute, I'll tell you, one of the years we were there was um, let's see, seventy six. About 83, 1983. Okay. Okay. So then you moved to... Green Hills Court. Green Hills Court, mm-hmm. across just kind of two blocks away. Wholesale was upstairs on the second floor. The store was downstairs. downstairs. And you were making these moves because you needed more space or you needed heat. <laughs> just, <laughs> we were just right. always moving. <laughs> That's a lot to move. <laughs> We I were stupid was... not to buy a building back then. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> it's all right. Nobody knew Nashville would be where it is no, today. No. But it was, we were a bit gypsy. Gypsy. Yes, we were. <laughs> we moved around a lot. And then after Green Hills Court, was that when we moved back over to Cleghorn? Mm, yes. And we were there yes. for a long time. Long time. Long time. By that's that where Chinese I, restaurant. Yeah, that's where I came mm-hmm. first and took my first classes yes. when my husband was in business school. It was at that location. And that was next door to the Steak and Ale. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is now the Dillard's. It's now Dillard's. Mm-hmm. The yes, line. the parking uh-huh. garage. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Who, was then, up, who was upstairs? Did it happen, did it happen upstairs? Cleghorn? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was an office building. Mm-hmm. We were just in the front of it. Is that where Gary Baker had an office there? No, that was Green Hills Green Hills Court. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you moved to where we are now. I mentioned with photography that now when we work, if it's a pattern cover and we're photographing children or if we're just trying to get samples, we, you know, we can photograph all day long. And But some of the photos that I looked through the era those children just look mad uh-huh <laughs> and that was not uncommon mm-hmm. that so was they didn't want to uncommon. be there dressed up no uh-uh and you're having to use a shutter camera that you don't know mm-hmm. and when people say something on Facebook about oh that is such a terrible picture I just want to go lady <laughs> it's from 1980 <laughs> Give us a break. (laughs) 
Yeah. I mean, I do. I, I sometimes feel like how lucky we are to have these tools, but mm-hmm. yet you all still still made it work. And not clipping out uh, little tiny pattern pieces that I shrunk on the copy machine and making a catalog. Remember yes. when I oh, would the do catalogs. that? Oh, the catalogs. Forever. <laughs> Forever. I guess you had to have a catalog because that's the mm-hmm. only way to show. Well, it was the only thing there was. Yeah, there yeah. was no internet. Right. Yeah. So we would people would call or write and say they would write letters to us. Do you have a catalog? We'd send it to them. Yeah, two dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness! So how often would you change that catalog? Every time we came out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. pretty often. Yeah. And you sold to shops primarily, as well as to individuals, or was it a good mixture? How did it was mostly wholesale, mm-hmm. so we were selling to shops mm-hmm. because you know the shops are around the country were important to everybody, mm-hmm. and so and they could go in and have this one on one relationship exactly. exactly. But now that's really doesn't exist. No, right? Not much. Mm-hmm. It's totally changed. Yeah, either those current owners couldn't find somebody that wanted to continue the business right. or you think those, that's the main reason? Um, probably. And the fact that it, all the merchandise is readily available online. So there's not the need for the shop right. that there used to be. That's kind of sad. I know. I know. Well, at one time there were five retail stores that did this in Nashville. Five in Nashville. Five mm-hmm. in Nashville. Oh my goodness. So, really? Um, the one in Donaldson, um, Miss Betty's down on Hillsboro, oh, um, um, the one in Brentwood by the Hills Grocery Store. Yes. What was that one? I don't remember the name of it. <laughs> it's going, it's good. But I can tell you where it was. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing that it could, that one city could support five mm-hmm. shops. Right. There was well, that I, much. I, I think that was due to Watkins. Uh huh. The influence. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. Mm-hmm. Training all these folks that wanted to sell. I mean, back then, where could you buy fabric? Right. You had to have one. And of we these. only had solids. Mm-hmm. Okay. We had broadcloth, mm-hmm. batiste, and it was all solids, mm-hmm. and it was all forty-five inches. Yes. Yeah, back because then. there was oh. no sixty. Interesting. And you, we didn't have. Fabric salesman that came to see us in those early days. Okay. And we would go to, there was somewhere up north of here, there was a Beasley's Beasley's wholesale, and we would go up there. And what was the brand that we got? Because it was before we discovered Speckler Vogel. Vogel. Um, And it was just, it was kind of like Speckler Vogel's, but not quite as nice. Not quite as nice. And Mm -hmm. we got broadcloth and. um, trigger and uh, do you remember that? Yes. And kind of thick. It, yeah, it was a lot it's of like twill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. poplin. Because those were nice for little boy things. And we would go to the Dallas, like to the Fabric Mart. Yes. Market. Yeah. And when did you discover a love of liberty of London? When we were on Cleghorn. Mm-hmm. We... It was before then. It was um, when we were up by uh, Lonnie Young. Because do you remember across the the little alley from her, there was a lady that did adult fabrics, and she carried Liberty of London, and we used to divide Liberty orders with her. I don't remember that. I don't yeah, remember, I don't remember that either. Well, that's when Annette was. She ran the store. She ran the store. My twin sister, uh-huh. and. Um, and we would split orders with this other store. And yeah. she would get more adult patterns, and we would get the little oh, interesting. sweet tin lawns. And so then by the time we went to Cleghorn, we were established with the liberty in England. Did y'all know that textile fabrics don't carry patterns anymore? No. You have to order them online. I didn't know that. Mm-mm, I went there, oh. expecting the pattern drawer cabinets. Well, McCall's <laughs> went out of business, didn't they? Hmm? Didn't McCall's go out of business? The, um, well, the pattern printer did. The printer okay. did. They uh-huh. they moved all of their printing to one um, Who prints central our patterns now? Simplicity. It's all under the, the same, same big design umbrella. group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you know, I I think as with a lot of things, I think that's a 
that may not be around forever. I don't you know? think it will be I think either. they're, uh, it's that kind of printing is, is far and few and far between. And um, it's wonderful, but it may not be here forever. Mm-hmm. Um, we've digitized patterns, which brings in a, a very particular person who loves that kind of, you know, instant gratification to buy it and print it at home. Uh, but we remained, even when we were thinking about going digital, Kathy, you remember it was like, but we, we're really committed to staying on tissue because yeah. as what, long as we can, as right. long as Absolutely. we can. And it, it adds complication for, to our business, of course, because we, you all know that back warehouse, we keep all of these pieces parts. Um, but there is something about hearing that tissue and yes. working with <laughs> but that I tissue. But was, I was teaching a little lesson two or three weeks ago. And it was instead of taping your digital pattern pieces together to sew them together. There you go. I love that. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah, that's that's great. Well, I um I just want to say how amazed I am to think about the positions that you all were in to just figure it out and not be afraid. And it sounds like y'all just had so much fun. Oh, we did. <laughs> we had big fun. We did. <laughs> Every day. Yeah. Every day. Which is so important. I mean, that keeps you wanting to come mm-hmm. back, right? It wasn't... And we had this girl that worked for us named Debbie Sobel that was so funny. And she would just keep us in stitches all the time. All the time. <laughs> I feel like I've heard stories that the children would come sometimes. Oh, if there was a holiday or uh-huh. something. Oh, yeah. You had the children running around, and it wasn't. And that's why we have the hours we do. Uh-huh. To get. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we always went home mm-hmm. when the kids. Three o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. We closed, closed it. down. Yeah. We closed at three mm-hmm. o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I still very much feel committed to that. It's, you know, I, I know, there's plenty of people who travel to Nashville that wish we could be open. We're not, we can't be open every weekend. We, we, right. we are women that have our lives and our families mm-hmm. and, you know. Are y'all open every other weekend? From every other Saturday from t- 10, 10 to 2. two. Um, which, you know. Is business good on those Saturdays? You're it, is. it is. It is. I mean, good. think about Nashville, too. That's I mean, worth we it. get a lot of people there. Lots are, of tourists, lots of football fans <laughs> who come here in the fall for games and, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. And yes. they're so happy when they walk in the front door, they announce that they have come to Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. It's so fun. And I know you both have experienced that sometimes because you happen to be in the mm-hmm. store. But people will walk in and they almost can't believe that, that they're there. Lizette and Ginger are <laughs> here. Um, but I just hope that warms your heart and speaks to what you all, you know, just kind of sat around and did. Because Ginger, you say, just because we wanted to sew for our, our children. children and sit and sew and have fun <laughs> yeah and to think what it has turned into mm-hmm. and i i very much share a lot of that same in- sentiment that this is just why not share this joy with as many people mm-hmm. as we can um yeah so you know thank you <laughs> i'm grateful for you and I really appreciate you all just sitting and and talking are there any other fun stories that you think of or um well we used to get into a little trouble when we would do special orders because like uh, there was one smocking plate to be worn for christmas day called the holiday handyman that got down to the last minute it got in the wrong bag got to the wrong customer lizette <laughs> had to drive it on christmas eve to the people's house you know so this was a custom order a custom order, order yeah order. might be why we don't do custom orders uh, yes. yes there are a lot of reasons y'all don't do custom there orders. are a lot of reasons it's funny because when somebody thinks it's a custom order it's a whole different thing than buying it off the rack uh-huh. of what they expect yes yeah so yeah it's hard. Well, all of it. I mean, right? These are, it's imperfect. Like, I know there's com- um, machines now that have, that do some sort of smocking. I mean, we know it's not right. really smocking. But, you know, there's something imperfect about mm-hmm. your hand doing it. Mm-hmm. That it, that makes it as special as it is. But, as Mrs. Johnson said, it's picture perfect. Oh, <laughs> I love that. Good, good memory there mm-hmm. that um, if you love it, then that's, that's all that matters, right? 
Well, thank y'all. Or the other thing is, nobody's going to see it on a galloping child. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> on a galloping horse. <laughs> I want to say one more thing. Um, because I do have a so classic for children, children's corner patterns on Facebook. It is a private group. I'm very protective <laughs> of these over 5,000 people. Mm-hmm. But if anybody sees this and wants to be in it, they need to send me a Facebook message mm-hmm. so that I can help them get into the group because. You wouldn't believe the gorgeous garments that people make and post out there. Yeah, it's just amazing. Well, I see. How do I get on? <laughs> You're in the great. Well, how do I, I get on? Do you know how to get on Facebook, Ginger? Yes, but that, where, where do I go then? <laughs> go up to the search box and type in "so classic for children." Okay, so that's classic. all you have to do. <laughs> Sir, so classic for children. See, I'm, I'm, I'm the old school. Oh. <laughs> I love it. I love, yes. I love that you still have those resources, and we can all continue to do that to just... But I love my ladies in this group. They yeah. are just fabulous. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, and we appreciate it because it certainly helps, um, you know, tell the story at Children's Corner and get our name in front of folks because um, we want to keep doing that for as many years as we can. So, good. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. You're welcome.